But yeah, unfortunately, I believe we've only got about 60 seconds left uh, for this afternoon. Of course, the Sunset Safari will be going ahead uh, as per normal. But uh, from myself and uh, directors Tadiwa for the first half and Tulu for the second, and it's been an absolute pleasure to have you all on board with us. And uh, we hope to see you uh, for a bit more wildlife content tomorrow. But uh, wherever you are out there, I hope you're having a wild afternoon. And thank you very much. And uh, we'll chat to you soon. Well, a very good afternoon to everybody. Once again, thanks for joining us on our highlight show. And uh, yes, we are coming here directly from uh, Juma Private Games in the Sabi Sands. And my name is Cedric. And behind the camera with me, we've got Muscles and Paul. So, yes, if it's your first time joining us on this highlight show, and uh, well, uh, for the next half an hour, we are going to discuss exactly what we've been seeing over the last 24 hours yesterday's uh, sunset safari as well as this morning's sunrise safari so yes i'm looking forward to that but this is on safari <laughs> Well, as you know, this is a live and interactive uh, show. So if you've got any comments, questions, or if you've got a fantastic suggestion for Amy or myself, you know, to a place that you want to go to this afternoon or something to see, uh, let us know. If you're watching on the Wild Earth website, make sure you do register so you can send those comments and questions through. Or if you're watching on the YouTube uh, channel or if uh, you're watching on uh, uh, our uh, app, yeah, make sure that uh, you send some uh, chats through as well. We are all waiting to chat with everybody. Yes, but anyway, what we're going to do, I am going to give show a few clips for this afternoon, go through a few things, <clears throat> discuss one or two things, as well as we're going to go over to Amy. That's on Wendy. She's busy preparing herself, getting ready for the drive, and we're going to see exactly what her plan is. And uh, later on, I'll tell you exactly what our plan is for this afternoon. But I think uh, further ado, let's uh, head to our first uh, clip from uh, yesterday afternoon. I think Amy was very lucky with this one. It was a fantastic sighting. It was uh, at one of the dams. We know it's known as BK's Dam of Nothing. And uh, well, Amy got some amazing action that side. Let's go and take a look. I think these are two young boys that are having a bit of a tussle with each other. Look at that. They're not very big yet. They still have some growing to do. And often young boys like this do do a little bit of play fighting. They're making a few noises as well. They are 
on the other side of the dam, so the sound is a little bit far, but every now and again there's a hit of the tusks. Oh. But how cool is this, boys and girls? Well, that was nice, Amy. I think that was a lovely sighting, that of uh, those two young uh, elephant uh, bulls playing around there at uh, Treehouse Dam. And, uh, well, you know, that's one thing. You always get the young boys playing around like that and uh, sometimes even going into the dam itself. And when they do go into the water, if it was a very hot day, I won't be surprised if those two young boys would have made their way into that uh, into the dam. So, fantastic. No, Mike, no, they're not uh, gentle giants anymore, Mike. Um, they, you can see, but they still, you know, they, they still at that age where, like, you know, the young males still kind of playing around with each other, still, you know, testing. But you can see that that is not aggressive. That's not aggressive. That's just playing around. That is just practicing for maybe one day when they do have to compete with another male that's in must, and he's in must, and then there's a female that's pretty much uh, around. Hmm? Stefan, uh, elephants will go into must, um, looking at around about 17, 18 years old. From there, that'll be the start. But from that age up to about 40 years old, their musting period is only for like a short period. It's like five, six, seven days. That's a musting period for those young boys. When a male gets to about 40 years old, 40 and above, uh, they can control their musting period up to 15 days. And... Uh, it's, it's amazing. So you'll find that uh, elephants or male elephants that's in must over the age of 40 is more successful in finding a female that's in heat. And that's why those boys get quite aggressive. You can, you can imagine 15 days in must, you're in like full must and uh, the testosterone is just ooh, so, so high. And then that, all of a sudden you've got another male that's also in must and, and it's got the same idea as you. Well, you know, then you all of a sudden get quite a, a huge tussle. And uh, yes, there has been elephant deaths uh, due to males competing against, uh, against one another. So I think there's a fantastic uh, elephant skull in Kruger National Park at a camp called Lataba, where they actually show you where the one male's tusk went into the other male's uh, skull. And he got he died like that. The guys were actually there filming, or you know, took photos of it and all that. And eventually got the, the tusk, as well as they got the the skull of that elephant. And uh, it's in the museum that side, the elephant museum at Lataba. So, wow! I mean, that is just uh, something amazing, amazing. All right, let's go and take a uh, look at the second clip, but. This was a surprise for me as well yesterday afternoon. I was very happy about this. And uh, what was nice about it is that uh, you know, it came practically right at the end. And we had this young male a leopard uh, till the close of the show. Let's go and take a look at that clip. Boing. He's looking at something. Oh, he's seeing, hearing something. So what he's doing as well at this age, are honing on uh, into their hunting skills. So like stalking, so like little Franklins and squirrels, mongoose, all those small little animals. He will try and try and stalk those uh, animals and just to practice his hunting skills. But he's slowly but surely becoming independent now. Look at him. This is a marvelous... Like he's almost picked up on something. Look at that. Watch at him. It's he is. Look at that. Standing on now a log. Just getting a nice little vantage point for himself. He's listening out. Using a fantastic sense of hearing. Oh. Off he goes again. This is brilliant. Maybe we might bump into should maybe he's picked up on her somewhere. 
look at those eyes. He's got big eyes. He's almost, he almost got like Shadulu's eyes. Anneli is stealing hearts, and that's why I say I think sooner, sooner or later you'll find that um, you will see more of him, and especially that he's getting used to Juma, to this side. He's going to feel more comfortable and more at ease, just pushing a little bit further east, a little bit further east into Juma. Look, he's not going. He's not setting up a territory yet, but he's still in his dad's territory, so he feels comfortable in his mom. That was uh, quite a beautiful sighting from yesterday afternoon and uh, that was exactly what I was explaining there. It was amazing just to see how big that boy's eyes are. He looks like he's always like he's shocked, you know, like a poor would say. He's shocked to see everything. He's just, just looking all over the show. I love that uh, little one. R Rosalind, yes, Rosalind a beautiful animal. I think... Uh, Leopards are always stunning and, uh, you know, it's always nice just to see them, like, you know, in person. <clears throat> and um, it's amazing that we can bring it to the screen as well and, uh, you know, live with these animals' lives and see what they do. And uh, it's such a privilege to actually view them, not day day by day, but, it's, you know, through their times. And uh, I think um, yeah, I think Nene is going to be seen many, many more times on Wild Earth and... Uh, yeah, I guess we cannot wait to kind of uh, look for him and uh, find him. I'm hoping to see him with his mom because we never see him with his mom. We always see him by himself. The only time we saw him with his mom is that uh, that was last year sometime when we found uh, Shidulu and uh, Nene when Nene was still small coming to one of the kills uh, on the western side of Juma. Um, that's the only time we really saw the two of them together. Other than that, um, you know, we've seen him by himself two or three times on the southern side of uh, southwestern corner and area. Oh, what do you say? No. Mm. Oh. Oh. Oh, my radio is not working again. And then the comms, it's funny, yeah, in this tent, it's like almost there's a, um, how can I say, uh, in like interference here for my radio, because I see that um, Paul's uh, comms is working very nicely outside there. Uh, just out because he's standing outside the tent and loving life and uh, here inside it seems like we are being blocked by amazing things. Oh, you hear the cicada so 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 beetles in the background? <laughs> it has to stop now. As soon as we mention it, it has to stop. Uh, <clears throat> talking about beetles, so I found a... I went walking today. So I went by myself, I went onto the quarant uh, quarantine, there's a big open clearing yeah, and uh, you know, just south of our camp, just put my shoes on, got my binoculars, and I just went for a walk, you know, for like a two hour walk. I just felt like I needed to just to, you know, kind of uh, open my mind a bit. It's always nature is like that for me, you know, nature is my therapy, no matter what, and all that. Always nature is my therapy, and that's always believe that uh, with Wild Earth, you know. Um, it always helps with a lot of people with mental health uh, issues and all that and it is very important to us. I think it's so, so important and that's exactly what I did today and it was a perfect fix, you know, it was a good fix for me and just going out there. But yes, we got like a, a little beetle, sorry, I'm just going to put it like this here. Can you see there? Yeah. So this is known as a ground beetle, a ground beetle. So it's actually a predator beetle. So I found this beetle. Oh, there's little ants that's running off this beetle. I think they try to eat it. And now this beetle usually runs on ground. You actually get the two-spotted ground beetle. This is known as the black ground beetle. It's got those beautiful little ridges on its back. And it's got very large mandibles. And uh, of course, being a predator, uh, uh, a beetle insect, they'll ro roam around on the ground and then they will try and uh, pretty much um, pretty much look for those uh, insects with those big mandibles. They'll grab the insect, their prey, and then they'll chew it up and they'll eat their prey. So yeah, a black, known as a black ground beetle. Very nice to see those things around there. Yeah. Um, but at night time, you see a lot of them at night time, mostly at night time. Daytime, not so much. Uh, 
All right, uh, welcome back everybody and uh, well, I think we can go to <laughs> I think well, while we sit here and prepare the next uh, clip uh, let's uh, head over to Amy she's outside yeah, and she is uh, preparing herself and uh, she's going to tell you exactly what her plan is for this afternoon Thanks Cedric it's good to be with you all here and uh, indeed it has warmed up the sun is shining and we found some shade out here to give you our update and our plans for the afternoon now with it being quite warm and really you know the, the clouds have cleared and the sky is looking beautiful we are planning to head to some water holes this afternoon I think that's the perfect way to start the sunset drive and we'll take it from there I'm gonna listen to the radio um, maybe follow up on any tracks that we see along the road as we go uh, but I think as it goes into the evening time we may see perhaps fingers crossed a cat or two come out to um, say hello so that is our plan Cedric back over to you And yes, well, it is Amy's last uh, drive for this stint, and uh, I'm hoping that she gets uh, something amazing for everybody this afternoon. I'm sure she will, and uh, I think she must just put her head down and look for those tracks and look for those cats for a good old Wednesday afternoon. But yes, uh, I think uh, let's go and take a look at our third clip for uh, this afternoon, and it was from uh, this morning. It was uh, what a nice clip and a nice one with Amy and uh, yeah, uh, I struggled with a few sightings this morning. It seems like everything was running away from me and flying away and all that. So yeah, but anyway, let's head over to this clip and then take a look what Amy found. Good morning. <laughs> that big mommy's gonna come up oh oh i thought she was gonna cross the road but she's not oh, hello mommy good morning it's okay it's okay morning it's all right hi do you want this bush here? Wow, this is so special. Oh, oh, I thought maybe she was going to break down that branch to get to the leaves that she wanted. Here comes the little one. Following mom. clip of uh, those elephants nice Amy see it's always nice just to be uh, and just keep your vehicle turned off <clears throat> sorry I do apologize about a vehicle talking about vehicle turn, being turned off and there's a vehicle that's busy rumbling in the background here but yeah always have elephant sightings <clears throat> keep the vehicle turned off and uh, you will be all right and if they're approaching you that's their decision and I always believe that's uh, that's the case so yeah <clears throat> Maureen, yeah, I think elephants is a lot of people's therapy. I think it, just wildlife in in general, Maureen, is a therapy to a lot of people. And I think that's exactly what I was saying a little bit earlier. I was actually saying that, uh, you know, I went for a little bit of a walk around quarantine, yeah, just uh, to the south of our camp, a big open clearing. And I just uh, 
went out there to grab my binox and went there for two hours. I just took a, a walk around that open clearing, you know. Of course, I'm, I'm vigilant with that. I mean, it's, uh, you've always got to be, but uh, and it's just always nice to take a look what's happening. Uh, how much, sorry, how much does the elephant weigh? Yeah, but how much? Oh, how much, Sandra, how much does the elephant weigh? Uh, Sandra, um, you know, it's, you know, big males are around about six tons, 6,000 kilograms. A female's about four and a half tons, so a female is smaller. Oh, he's going. All right. Uh, <laughs> there was a Niala bull that was actually walking past us here now, and he was just uh, enjoying a little bit of a, a walk around. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's, it's always nice. But yeah, always nice to see that. Nice with Amy. <laughs> anyway, it's <laughs> not making me laugh here. And um, <laughs> so, yeah, well, look, you know what? I think Paul's like he's 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 bouncing like a frog at the moment because you know tomorrow is his last day, and uh, you know when you know and you can see that finish line, and you know that you are going on leave. You know you if, you just get those bubbles, you know, in the tummy and everywhere. So, I think Paul's got those bubbles. Oh, yeah, so I just want to see that Niola's gone. Yeah. No, he's gone. All right, I want to see if I can just uh, sorry, um, uh, uh, Chulu. I just want to double quick uh, check. Uh, oh, there we go. It is. It is working. No, but it isn't working. That's a funny picture there. I want to use a microscope because I've got this um, ground ground beetle, and I just want to see if it's going to work here. But it turns off. Oh, yeah, no. okay, can you? <laughs> Chulu, yeah, I just had to say wait a little bit, but it's fine. Um, can you see the picture there, Chulu? I just want to see because uh, it looks like the microscope just turned off here. Yeah? <laughs> All right. Well, you can see the mandibles on the ground beetle. So they've got these big, but you can't really see it too nicely. It's folded in. So that's the head of the ground beetle. So the mandibles is folded in, but they've got these big mandibles. And um, especially the, the one that's got the largest of the ground beetles, because you've got the, there's about 40,000 species of uh, ground beetles in the world. 40,000. And this is known as a black ground beetle. And there's one in this area we call the two spotted uh, ground beetle, much larger mandibles. So, uh, you know. all right, uh, Chulu, you can come back to me if you want to. It's just unfortunately, it's frozen now. I've got the beetle in my hand and the, and the picture's still there. So, yeah, I think it was just a frozen picture on that. Uh, on that microscope, but at least it uh, came out just perfect. Lovely. But yeah, loads of ground beetles around uh, in, uh, in the world. Um, different kinds of ones. You've got like uh, ones that's got a very kind of shiny top, and this one's got very much a rough ridges. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's. Uh, Wow, it's nice to see that. And as I said, going out on a walk like this uh, during the day, um, yeah, it's perfect. And uh, I'm trying to do that more often as well as I getting got into my a little bit of uh, exercises and all that. So I just uh, you know got the like a resistant band that I'm using to kind of keep myself going during the daytime. So Andrew. Uh, I'd say, well, quite often, I've been doing a, quite a few walks recently. Um, I practically try and walk every second day, you know, if I've got the opportunity. I've been loving it. I think it's like the most, it's the nicest therapy, just to kind of clear my hair, just to relax, enjoy nature. And, um, you know, like today, it was so beautiful walking there, and you see this whole herd of impalas just like running past me, jumping over the road, and, you know, it was, it was amazing. I love it. And... Uh, you know, that's why I can never get tired of the bush. Never, never, never. And uh, I'll never be able to stay in a city. I think it is, uh, for me, it'll be like torture being in a city or a town. So, yeah. Very fortunate being you know, out in, here in this uh, beautiful wilderness of ours. So. <laughs> I 
All right, so we're going to go slowly but surely we're going to get to our last uh, clip for the afternoon. And uh, I think what we're going to try and do is uh, see how long it is. Yeah, I think let's get to it. And this was a nice one once again with Amy this morning. As I said, and poor myself for a little bit unfortunate getting any kind of sightings running through this morning. But uh, Amy came right at Twin Dams and she picked up on a beautiful, beautiful monitor. Let's go and take a look at it. Oh, now we've got some sunlight on him. That's great. I'm hoping maybe it'll get out the water for us and you can see its body, which is quite cool. If it does get to the other side and sort of get to the shallows and come out a bit more, I might just loop around so we can see it a bit better. Although it is looking to come out there now. Oh, there we go. It is coming out. Wow, look at that yellow under the, the chin. And that's one of the main ways, other than, of course, the habitat, that we can differentiate between the water monitor and the rock monitor. A rock monitor is a lot more just plain uh, sort of gray black whereas a water monitor has these sort of yellow streakings on it maybe it's going to come out and lie in the sun a bit there's of course a reptile just like a crocodile and uh, needs to warm up in the sun how cool is this Epic. Uh, a great sighting once again. Uh, it's nice to see those Nile monitors, especially around there at Twin Dams. We've been fortunate always having them in that side, especially and uh, yeah, at Gauri Dam as well. So. Um, yeah, I think uh, one thing I can say that is uh, Juma at all the dams, it's riddled with uh, Nile monitors and um, seeing this happening like that this morning or this morning, and seeing the monitor actually coming out and going on to the bank to get uh, some sun, lovely. I was actually hoping for that this morning with the crocodiles, uh, with the crocodile, I hope, Paul. So we also had that big crocodile there at Biffelzuk Dam. And um, that crocodile was just swimming, and I thought, okay, well, it's the, the morning is heating up. I might uh, thought it might come out. Natalie, a Nile monitor, a water monitor, gets to about, I think they recorded about 2.1, 2.2 meters. It's what it is the largest uh, monitor species that we do have here. So it gets way bigger than a, a rock monitor. So it's uh, they've been huge. I've seen big ones. Uh, they're in the sand river. Um, oof, we used to get big, uh, well they're still there, but uh, I used to see the big, big monitors that side. So yeah, very nice to see, nice to always witness those things and uh, nice to see them, especially when they go down into the riverbeds in the Mulawati. Um, so I yeah, do apologize, there's some people that's uh, uh, just uh, calling each other around here. Well we are at uh, Juma, we are at the camp area, so I'm sure that some of the staff members that's uh, working around here. But yes, uh, I think for this uh, for this afternoon, this afternoon, Paul, what do you feel like? What do you? What is your gut, gut telling you? I don't know. Maybe I don't know. Maybe wild dogs. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, from Paul, yeah, maybe later on. So wild dogs will be fantastic. I'd love to see some wild dogs this afternoon. I think. We are we are due for some wild dogs. We haven't had wild dogs for quite some time now, so I think it's a, it is about time that we get some of those uh, dogs onto Juma again. It'll be nice, as well as I'm thinking maybe I want to do a little bit of the western side again. Uh, I've got a, just a feeling the west, uh, maybe towards Treehouse Dam, Twin Dams, south southwest. Gonna go and try and. Uh, you know, see what we can find for the afternoon. It is a beautiful afternoon. The sun is shining. Uh, there's hardly a, a breath of air today, a breath of wind, nothing. So it is uh, a glorious day. So uh, I'm going to grab some uh, nice uh, juice now, uh, some Oros. I love Oros. Oros and sparkling water. Well, not sparkling, what's it? Uh, soda water. 
It's like my new favorite. That and tea. You like it, Paul? Oros and soda water. Got that fuzzy. So it almost makes it like uh, like a Fanta orange kind of thing, you know. But it's your own your own brew, you know. So yes, I'm gonna go get one of those for us now. But uh, well, I'm hoping that everybody else has got their snacks and uh, beverages for this afternoon. Make sure that you come and uh, jump on board the world's largest safari vehicle and uh, come and see exactly what we can find out there for everybody else this afternoon and i'm looking forward to it i am really looking forward to it and i think it's going to be a good afternoon so grab your snacks and supplies and come and jump on board with us on safari